And joining us now with more on the Al Jazeera law is the executive director of Honest Reporting, Gil Hoffman. Gil, thank you for joining us. Pleasure being with you, Lidar. So the Knesset passed the new law. Its target, uh, and they've said this openly, is Qatari-owned Al Jazeera station, which has been deemed to be harming Israel's national security. What more can you tell us about this new law and the government's intentions? Well, uh, first of all, I need to admit that I've been interviewed on Al Jazeera many times, uh, and at uh, times when uh, the government has decided to boycott Al Jazeera and not send any official government spokesmen, sometimes I've come there and presented the Israeli point of view. Um, that being said, now they're taking a, a step beyond that and trying to make it illegal for Al Jazeera to operate in Israel. And uh, so technically, the bill would allow uh, the prime ministers to sign an edict uh, saying that um, a particular media outlet could not work here. Uh, they would be able to confiscate their broadcasting equipment and close their office. Um, and they would need approval from a judge to be able to do it. Uh, it would be only for 45 days. And then it would have to go through a process again. And it can only happen during a war. And, you know, the United States has expressed concern uh, over the bill. I mean, what's your analysis of this? Is this law really going to hamper freedom of the press in Israel? This law, unfortunately, or, or fortunately, depending on where you're coming from, will change very, very little. Uh, Al Jazeera can broadcast from Ramallah. Al Jazeera can broadcast from Gaza. Uh, it won't end up with anyone seeing them less than they do now. Um, it'll make it harder for Israeli uh, officials to talk to Al Jazeera and present the Israeli point of view. Uh, but it will send a message uh, that Israel doesn't want Al Jazeera after all the harm they've done to Israel during this war uh, to uh, act un unhampered. And uh, there have been plenty of uh, very incorrect reports on Al Jazeera that were unprofessional and that did a lot of damage to Israel. So I understand why the government wants to make a symbolic gesture, even if it won't be very effective and even if it will be very temporary. And are there any other news organizations that might also fall into this category besides Al Jazeera? Uh, so uh, there are uh, Hezbollah uh, and uh, Hamas affiliated television stations. They don't have offices here, though uh, they do operate from here in, in one way or another. And so technically it would apply. But but you have to understand uh, there are laws like this in democracies all around the world. In, in England, for instance, uh, they removed press TV of Iran uh, from their cable networks. Uh, they haven't gone further in, in banning them, but uh, there are limitations to enemy media around the world. And if anything, it sends a message. People don't realize that Al Jazeera is Qatari state-run media. Uh, people watching this in America and Canada uh, and England, uh, they might have a problem with uh, getting state-run media of Russia or China, uh, but they watch Al Jazeera. They need to know that uh, Al Jazeera is the state media of Qatar, uh, and uh, broadcast the opinion of Qatar, which is not only against Israel and against the Jews in general, but also against the Palestinian Authority and moderates among the Palestinians. They want Hamas to take over the West Bank and Gaza, and uh, they uh, want to aid and abet the terrorism that they fund. You know, this has been something uh, that's been discussed for a long time, since Israel's security forces warned uh, that Al Jazeera was disclosing the location of Israeli troops in Gaza. But the government has refrained from taking action due to the hostage negotiations, which are still ongoing. So this begs the question, why now? You know, why pass this law now? Lidar, I think you're hitting the nail on the head that this has to do with the hostage negotiations, that they are purposely trying to pressure Qatar, the, the state sponsor of Hamas, during the hostage negotiations uh, in order to get Hamas to give in to them. And maybe, uh, maybe if a, a deal is reached to bring the hostages home at a less exorbitant price, 
than the Hamas uh, has been demanding, maybe suddenly this law will be suspended. Uh, maybe this has to do with uh, we thought that Israel wouldn't uh, take as much action in Gaza during Ramadan and, and then went into Shifa um, in order to prove the strength and, uh, of the IDF and uh, make it uh, encourage the uh, Hamas to give in during the negotiations. Maybe this is the same intent. All right. Well, Gil Hoffman, thank you so much for your analysis today. Pleasure being with you, Nita.